Welcome to Nebraska Farmcast, a production of the Center for Agricultural Profitability at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I'm Ryan Evans. Along with the recent rise in commodity prices, producers have been seeing increasing input prices, illustrating the importance of knowing your operation's cost of production. To discuss how cost of production budgets can assist crop producers in getting a handle on their finances and profitability, I am here today with Corey Walter, an associate professor and grain marketing specialist in the Department of Agricultural Economics here at UNL. Hello, Corey. Hi, Ryan. As well as Glennis McClure, a farm and ranch management analyst in Ag Econ here at UNL. Hi, Glennis. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for having us today. Yeah. Thank you both for joining me, and you both have collaborated on a new article about 2022 cost of production increases, expected profit, and navigating a riskier financial environment, and that is available on our website, cap.unl.edu. And uh, Corey, we'll start with a question for you. Input prices like those for fertilizer and fuel have been on the rise as 2021 draws to a close here. So if these prices continue into 2022, what do producers need to keep in mind about the financial impact this could have on their operations? Yeah, there's two major points here uh, uh, to have, and, and you can't you have to you have to look at both. Um, and, and underlying it was essentially a risk versus reward. The uh, the risk is we're we're walking further up a ladder of financial risk by by spending more money. Uh, so the further you fall, the more it can hurt um, if you don't take the the right precautions. The other one is the reward that that uh, 2022. Uh, corn futures price is quite high, and as we'll hear in, hear in a little bit, that's it's actually uh, there's still profit, expected profit on, on the table. So uh, uh, this isn't necessarily the end of the world, but uh, uh, you got to balance both of these things um, when when we look at these these prices uh, and we evaluate what they do to our operations as uh, we we go into next year. And the University of Nebraska-Lincoln's new online ag budget calculator tool, uh, which we also refer to as ABC, integrates university crop budgets and allows users to customize those to determine their own cost of production. And Glennis, you have done so much work with ABC. Why are you encouraging farmers to use that and to use production budgets as they prepare for next season? Well, yes, Ryan. Um, By utilizing a budgeting program like our new Ag Budget Calculator, again, ABC, producers can enter what their anticipated prices for inputs and the quantity of the input used, or in general, and see then what the projected cost per acre and per bushel will be as they estimate the production yield. So crops are marketed by units, as we know, so such as bushels, pounds, tons. So it's important to understand projected cost per unit of production. So the new ABC program makes it easy to make changes to prices and to look at some of the what ifs, like if they want to change products, change application amounts, change other costs such as fuel, and look at projected costs and net returns of whatever they're planning for their enterprises in the coming growing season. And would you be able, Glennis, to walk through an example for listeners of how they can use UNL's crop production budgets and the Ag Budget Calculator tool to identify changes in cost of production? Yes, in our article, we included a couple of examples of cost increases in two of our university crop budgets that we did in 2021. So those 2021 budgets were our baseline. And so what I what I kind of figured was incrementally adding um, input price changes with the first one increasing the cost of fertilizer. As we know, we're looking at substantial increases in prices there. Then we see fuel costs nearly doubling from what we had in our 2021 budget. So those changes were made. And then I looked at some um, other increases in pesticide seed and even machinery list prices. So as in these examples, and again, they're used, used as a guide. Uh, we're not, we, we just are estimating some of these price changes at this point in time. And who knows what it'll be like when you actually pay for those products and so on. But um, with all these changes made on the dryland corn budget, um, in this example, it, using 145 bushel yield projection, the total economic cost increased by 95 cents, going from $3.19 to $4.14 per bushel. And then with similar cost in increases inputted into the irrigated budget, 
using a 245 bushel yield, we're looking at a total projected cost increase from 318 to $4.11 per bushel. So they're pretty similar. We've, they've obviously got, with the dry land, we use different input uh, amounts, and with the irrigated, a little bit more. But it's interesting that the dry land economic cost is 414 and the irrigated was $4.11 per bushel. Again, those are estimates and just used to be used as a guideline. So I'd really like to encourage folks to stay tuned as we'll be updating the university crop budgets for 2022 in the coming week. And we'll have actually 84 budgets entered into the ABC program for them to download uh, so that ag managers, producers can look there to download them and, and then go in and customize and actually put in their own information to develop their own budget. Yeah, thanks, Glennis. And we should mention if listeners want to check out the ABC tool, they can find information about that and get registered through our Center for Ag Profitability website, CAP, that's C-A-P dot U-N-L dot E-D-U slash A-B-C. And Corey, what are some profit and risk management considerations producers should be keeping in mind when they use cost of production budgets? Yeah, given we're, uh, you know, a ways before we we start planting uh, next year's crop, you got a whole variety of uh, uh, profit and risk management considerations. But I want to point out just two um, of, of those, two, two of the big ones. First one's forward contracting. Uh, this one has uh, uh, undoubtedly left a bad taste um, in producers' mouths from, from last year. Um, but that, that is last year. The, the, the costs, um, the, the prices, everything are, are at, a, at a different point in time right now. And, and I strongly encourage producers to take a second look at, that, at forward contracting next year's crop. Uh, especially now that we know that those production costs are that much higher, um, that that uh, we, we don't want to get caught on the back end where they come, where the prices come way down, and uh, we we can't we can't pay back what uh, you know the input costs put into the crop. And the second one is uh, crop insurance. Um, that that all you know obviously will uh, uh, stop the the hurt at some point. Um, but for that uh, for crop insurance, we need uh, to get into February where we can uh, get that projected price, uh, uh, start that determination. So it's, it's, uh, we're a ways out for that. So we, we have uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, you know, risks from different sources going on here. And is there anything else you recommend to producers for them to keep in mind in their decision-making process so that they can best position themselves for profitability next year? Yeah, the, the first one is, you know, you're, when you see those prices, those fertilizer prices, they, they're, they're going to be, they're going to be higher. You know, someone will say, well, you know, uh, a, a certain fertilizer is at $900 a ton. Well, first of all, it's, it's the change from where it used to be. Let's say it was at 700. Now it's at 900. So it's a $200 a ton increase. Use your budgets. They, they act as a filter to get you back to an even playing field where you can compare what that increase in cost does per acre or per bushel. And you can also then, then, efficiently and effectively look over at what your expected revenue is at the same time. And in and, and viewing it through that lens will put a lot, a lot better uh, or more, more clear picture of what's actually going on. If you just stop at the increase in fertilizer price, you, you can get discouraged um, and that can lead to, to other, other things. We, we need to make sure we keep our decision-making process uh, uh, quite strong using valid information and uh, I'd also recommend they explore all possible uh, um, avenues of, of which way to adjust their costs. Uh, there's a lot of things producers can do. Um, and uh, in that, I would, I would try to find the one that gives you the, the lowest risk, uh, meaning the, the lowest cost to, to produce a, a good crop, which would be the highest, highest reward. Um, you just can't pull back fertilizer, as we know, to, to nothing and then, and then you know, subsequently implode your yield. Uh, expectations at the same time. So we, we got to find that that balance and that will be different for everyone. Um, but at the end of the day, you, you, we're walking up a ladder and we, we have to, uh, a, a financial risk ladder and, and we have to we have to protect ourselves in case we fall off. All right. That is Corey Walters and Glennis McClure from the Department of Agricultural Economics and the Center for Ag Profitability here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And for more on what we've been talking about here in this episode, you can read their new article up on the center's website at cap.unl.edu. Corey and Glennis, thanks for your time. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. 
Nebraska Farmcast is a production of the Center for Agricultural Profitability at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. For the latest research-based information and education resources to manage your farm or ranch operation, visit our website at cap.unl.edu. That's cap.unl.edu.